give you time because I know this is a really important uh, topic. I want to give you time to share with us five ways to start attracting men instead of boys. And uh, <laughs> I like the sound of that a lot. I'm sure the women on the call just like the sound of that a lot as well. <laughs> I have had my share of boys. <laughs> Haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Bop, 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 boys. Yeah. So, yeah, so, you know, I'm talking about, like, the men that we're, we're just sharing about. You know, this is, uh, you know, the men. When I, when I you know, my, com my company is called Date Like a Grown-Up. So when I talk about men, I, I always talk about grown-up men. These are the men that I assume you want to meet. The men that are, you know, have had some success in life. Uh, they've had failures and they've handled them with grace and they know how to face you know the real world they've had life experience they're grounded they're responsible i mean they're yes they're attractive and they're fun and they're interesting and that juicy stuff but you want a man who's going to have your back right you want a man you can trust and you can count on and that like you is committed to working to create a really great relationship so those are the men i'm talking about attracting and the boys are the I just want to have fun I just want to have sex uh, I just want you to give 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 to me the narcissist the selfish guys no more of those no more of those so I really want to help you um, who are watching I want to help you know the difference between them and what you can do to make sure you're attracting the good guys attracting the grown-up guys and repelling the schnooks I'm literally repelling. I, I want to go, ah, she's not for me. <laughs> no matter how good looking or how charismatic or. So I have three. So I have uh, two do's and three don'ts. Okay, good. Let's jump. Let's jump right in. I like that word schnooks though, by the way. No, I would say schmucks, but you know, <laughs> schnooks. <laughs> I think I just did say it. Um, yeah. So um, here's a do. Okay. And this is like to attract good grown-up guys who are commitment, you know, who are commitment, uh, committed to commitment, I want to say. So the first two is help him get to know you. Help him get to know you. The old truth about, oh, just sit and listen to the man and, you know, because we should just sit here and be quiet. That is not true of these men. These men, remember what I said, these men are looking for commitment. They're looking for connection. They value, they, they, downright crave a woman's presence and so you you when you show up talking about yourself sharing about your life letting him know who you are then number one a man gets a signal that you trust him a man gets a signal that you're open and he can trust you and it's the best way to get to know one another you know, you've got an hour with someone, right? Or, you know, 90, 90 minutes. So you take responsibility for helping him get to know you. And I have a tip to help you do that. Okay, great. So my tip is use nuggets, what I call nuggets. Okay. Nuggets are small pieces of information about you, about your life, about your dreams, about your accomplishments, about what makes you laugh, what makes you cry, how you grew up what you're looking for in love, um, pieces about yourself that you can share that help him get to know you. And with his response back to you, help you helps you get to know him. And I'm going to give you a really specific example. Um, I know we don't have enough time for me to really work, dig deep, but here's a, a really specific. And by the way, this comes from my husband. My husband says, women talk in stories, men listen in headlines. Mm. and want to listen in headlines yeah so nuggets an example is um the answering the question what do you do for a living okay what do you do for a living so nuggets take um fact and add feeling that's the important part that's the feminine part of what you're going to express to him so michelle i'm gonna i'm gonna can we be my guinea pig yes okay so what do you do for a living I am a relationship coach working with single women who want to meet and attract the right guy. And I'm going to, I modeled it that way uh, 
because I know you want to make a point. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't necessarily put the feeling behind it in it. <laughs> Thank you for playing along. Yeah. So why do you love it? I love it because I get to see women find the joy of discovering more about themselves and finding deep and passionate relationships with men that they never thought were possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's always the question when you're dating, what do you do? It's like an American thing. It's yeah. kind of, you know, unique here. So what the difference between I'm a dating and relationship coach and I work with a minute versus I'm a dating relationship coach and I love it because I get to help women blah, blah. Okay. So that's because it's a magic word. It helps you translate fact to feeling. So you can say something like, um, you know, where did you grow up? I grew up in Omaha or I grew up in Omaha and you know what? I loved it because my childhood was. So that's a way that you can share about yourself. We are grownups. Don't be afraid to share. This is, you may not agree. I'll be interested. Don't be a share, afraid to share about religion or politics or if you want to get married because you're grownups. Mm -hmm. Okay. And don't be afraid to share something he may not like because this is about helping you get to know somebody and helping him get to know you. So it's good. If you share something about, you know, yourself, it's kind of juicy. You don't want to share. Yeah. My, 30 year old daughter's living with me and she's a mooch. I, I'm not talking about sharing that kind of stuff, but I'm talking about, you know, like the elections coming up or the election, you know, our new elections are coming and then we just passed this one. Right. So if you were on a date, like before November, um, you have to talk about it if you care about politics. So just make sure you state the fact and then the feeling, the feeling in that case would be your values, what you care about. He could respond with, no, I do not agree with that. That's great. You just got to know something really important about him and he, you. Yeah, so, I absolutely agree with that, Bobby, because I think, first of all, being real and authentic and who you are allows someone to know you and you to know them. And I actually believe it's even more important as we're a little more mature because we want to be sorting. We don't want to spend a year or two trying to figure out um, if this is going to be a compatible relationship, we, I mean, I don't want to say we don't have that kind of time, but we kind of don't have the same kind of time that we might have had, um, you know, when we're in our 20s and 30s, if we want to be in a partnership relationship. Yeah, and, and part of the, like we were talking about, Michelle, that we know, like, we do have a life and we do have feelings and we do have, you know, we have beliefs and we've created these, which is not to say we won't change them. I've made a lot of changes since knowing Larry. He's taught me a lot and I think I've taught him, but there are whatever you're, um, you really care about. That's what I ask my clients when I do my first step in my six step system. One of the questions is what do you care about deeply? Write some nuggets about that. Write some nuggets about that so you can share them and start a conversation with the men you're meeting. They will appreciate it. I promise I've had, I've had, um, women that I've coached through this men have said, Oh my gosh, I've never talked to a woman. That's like that, you know, shares so much. This is great. They, um, the right man will love it. And the other guys will not because they're not interested in what you have to say, or they don't share the same feelings or beliefs, which is good because next. Yeah. Good to find out. Yeah. Okay, so I love that concept of sharing and nuggets and the question that you Posed, which is what do you deeply care about that can help a woman get in touch with some of these nuggets that she could share so what's our next tip our next tip is do expect them to actively try to make you happy do expect them to make you happy so when you're talking about the difference between boys and men boys are these you know the self-centered me 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 guys and men especially you know by just through nature, men want to take care of women. Men want to protect women. I mean, this goes back to, you know, the caveman days, right? It's their nature. And so good men want to do things for a woman. You see it when you're, I see it when I'm on a plane and men are always offering, can I help you put your luggage up? And women are always going, nah, it's okay. 
Um, when it, love me. You know, I love them. <laughs> me too. So, uh, so you should be looking for, actively looking for signs that the man is doing things to try to make you happy. That comes in, in uh, the sense uh, of, for instance, he may say, oh, great, let's go out, you know, Friday night, 8 o'clock. Do you have a place you like to go? That's a man trying to make you happy. It's generally not a man trying to be lazy. A lot of women are like, that's so, he should be planning everything. A man who really cares about you being happy will likely ask you where you like to go because then he's sure you'll be happy. He asks how your meal is. He asks if you're hot or cold. He, he may ask you things that kind of bug you because you are a strong, independent woman and you don't need his help. Or you don't need his concern. But I'm telling you, if you want to, if you want to know the boys from the men, the men are even bragging. Some men will brag and it'll drive you crazy, but pay attention. There's a good chance he's doing it because he's trying to impress you and he thinks it's going to make you happy. Mm -hmm. So my tip is you, you want to look for it, but it may look like something different than you expect, mm -hmm. right? So maybe you think he should make you happy by taking you to a really fine restaurant or taking you to a play or telling you you look beautiful. You have things in your mind that he should say, please be open. And remember, he's not you and he's a man. So look for signs. And if you don't see them, it's because he's not a guy who cares about it. And um, I, would, I would next. But if you do see them and he's not somebody you're hot for or you're crazy about or you want to jump in bed with, give him more of a chance because that's a man that can make you happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he cares about making you happy. Yeah. I, I really love that. That's, that really resonates with me. And I know you've experienced this too, Bobby, I'm sure with some of your clients, but I have one client that I'm thinking of in particular who initially didn't feel that, you know, that chemistry, that excitement, but this man was just showing up in such a way where he was constantly, you know, caring about her comfort and her pleasing her and wanting to make her happy. And I encouraged her, like you just said, to give him a little bit more of a chance. She's madly in love with him. She's in her 60s, engaged. They're building a house together, married. And she has thanked me so many times that she didn't let this man go. And he showed up for her. And that's one of the things I said to her. I said, I love how he's showing up for you. So just give it a little time and experiment and look a little deeper. Uh, because I think that we as women can become, in many cases, much more attracted to a man if he shows up in that way. And once we know his heart and character and who he really is. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a dance to figure out how to be discriminating and wise and not over invest, mm -hmm. but also to um, give the good guys a chance. Right. And so I love that we're having this conversation about the men and the boys. Yeah. I, I'm almost every one of the women that I've supported and, and coached who are now in love will say the man they're with is not like the man they imagined they'd be with. Yeah. Which, which I say to them, yeah, that's the point. Because the man you've wanted to be with all these years, wrong man. Exactly. And yeah, so definitely look for that. Look for that. And, and the next thing is, that the third do is allow them to make you happy. Mm -hmm. Allow them to make you happy. This is one of those things we, when we talked about earlier, Michelle, about what makes it such a challenge for us. Biggest one, we are not good receivers. Women that, you know, look, you know, we, again, we are competent. We take care of everything and we can take care of it, everything. So on the one hand, that's true. And on the other hand, from almost every single woman I talk to, and I certainly said this is, oh, if only I had somebody to help me take care of everything. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, the third do to attract men, not boys is, you need to allow them to make you happy. You need to be a gracious receiver. Good guys, men who want to give, will not be attracted to you if you will not take. Mm -hmm. The men who are attracted to you are the ones who don't want to give. So if you've been consistently attracting the boys, the selfish guys, the narcissistic guys, the lazy guys, that's because 
you are not a good receiver and they see you and they go, yes, <laughs> she's not, she doesn't want to receive. I don't want to give. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> she's got that covered. <laughs> yeah. So my tip for this is you need to tell him what makes you happy. Don't be afraid to tell a man what makes you happy. If he's a man who wants to make you happy and he's a man who looks for you to be a gracious receiver, part of that is saying when he says, is there a place you'd like to go to? Not saying back to him, oh, you just pick. Saying to him, you know, thanks for asking. I love this. I've always wanted to go to this new place. That will make him so happy. And it'll make you happy because you get it. And when you go there and you thank him for taking you there, you're graciously receiving and a good man's going to just melt into that. He's going to love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this principle of graciously receiving, I think is so powerful. I've even had clients say that this one thing has opened up a whole new world of possibility with them, with men. And I've even said that this one thing, knowing how to learning how to graciously receive and then appreciate the man has totally shifted um, the relationship dynamics and created that romantic partnership possibility for them. So I love that you brought that up. Okay. So now I think we have a couple of don'ts, right? Don'ts. I do want to say real quickly though, this receiving, you know, the, these things I'm saying are not just true in romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the idea about looking for men wanting to help you in business, it really pisses us off, right? It's like, I don't need your help. If you want to change your dynamic in business, look for the men who are offering to help you and, and say yes, and you will see, I, I, you will see his response. I want you to experience the response of you saying yes to men who wants to help because they will puff up like, you know, their peacock feathers will go out and they will be delighted. And it'll, it, like you said, it'll, like Michelle said, it, it'll change your life. I, I, I sort of joke that like my favorite word in the dick, my favorite word to say now is honey. <laughs> and then I think, wait, I, I could open this jar, <laughs> but it's lovely to have that option. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And please, when they ask to put your, help you with their suitcase, just say, yes, thank you. Yes. I want you to experience that. Okay. Uh, don't. My uh, number four, this is my don't. Don't expect men to chase you. So this is a biggie, and it's very specific to, to speaking of men as they, you know, get older. They're, again, they're not, they're not looking. The men you want are not looking just for ego. They're not looking just to get laid. These 50, 60, you know, even 70-year-old men, they're looking for female connection. They're looking for that man-woman connection. And these men have accomplished a lot in their life. They know how to get what they want, right? They know what they want. They know how to get what they want. You want that man, right? That man, if he's getting a no from you or a no uh, signal, he is not going to, going to torture himself by continuing to go after you. That is not what a grown-up man does. Grown-up men do not chase. So it's really important that you show your interest. So that's my tip, okay? Know that, again, um, they're not going to keep going after you. And if they do, I want you to really pay attention to why are they doing it. Are they doing it because they adore you or are they doing it because of ego? Mm -hmm. Probably because of ego if they're older. So here's my tip. You need to show interest, but not take the lead. Show interest, but don't take the lead. So here's a really specific little script. I can give you a little example. At the end of the date, if you're with a man that you like and you want to go out with him again, give him the, you know, I had a great time, Bob. But that's obligatory. I mean, how many times has somebody said, Michelle, how many dates have you gone, gone on where a guy said, oh, I had a nice time, and you never heard from him, right? Yeah. yeah. It's just what we say. So I want you to append that. I had a great time, Bob. It would be really nice to do it again. Mm -hmm. Make it meaningful. Look him in the eye. It would be really nice to do it again. That means if you ask, I'm going to say yes. And a grown-up man, a man that's really looking – to get to know you will so appreciate you making that easier for him. 
Um, Michelle and I were talking before, right, before we started yeah. about her amazing, fantastic man panel and how the men, men aren't as uh, too different than we are. And they feel rejection and they have their fears and they have their doubts. And um, a, a grounded, successful, you know, smart grown up man is kind of like okay with that now. And he's not going to stick around if you don't make him feel good about himself, just like you won't if he doesn't make you feel good. So show interest, but don't take the lead. Yeah, Bobby, I love, I love that you mentioned this because I think that um, we sometimes do get in this fantasy of the man, as you put it earlier in the conversation, the man has to climb the wall and we have to send him through all these rigorous tests and trials to make him prove our love for us, you know, like some kind of romantic fantasy. But I think you're right. I mean, I'm thinking of my husband and I know that, you know, heaven forbid, if I were gone and he were single again, he's a high quality man, but he would not climb a wall. He would be there and he would be present. But unless he had that signal from a woman that, yes, it's okay to proceed, he'd be out of there. And she would have lost out on a great man. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, it's a, it's to them, it's a waste of time. I mean, they'll, they'll you know, show interest. Like, you know, Larry actually, um, the other thing, and here's sort of just another tip, the thing about grown-up men, you don't have to guess if they like you. Mm -hmm. If you have to ask, I wonder if he's into me, he's not. Grown-up men are not afraid to show their, their, fe their feelings about you. They're afraid to show their feelings sometimes. That's another conversation. But, um, but they don't hold back. If they want you, if the man that you want knows how to get what he wants, then he's going to be really clear. He's confident and he'll say, I'm into you. Every woman, 100% of the women that I've, I've sort of ushered through to love, the men first, the men were crazy about them from the beginning mm -hmm. and told them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's very true. Okay, so we have one more. Last one. So this is a biggie. Um, don't expect them to act like you or your girlfriends. So don't expect men to act like women. So I touched on this a little bit earlier with how he shows that he's trying to make you happy. You know, they are not, uh, men and women are very different. Like Alison Armstrong says, who I know you're going to talk to, um, she has the best thing that men are not hairy women. Mm -hmm. Right? So don't expect don't have a very specific expectation of how he should act or how he should behave or how he should respond or what he should do for you because number one, he's just not you. And layer on that his brain, his life experience is very different from yours. So it's very, very important to be able to have compassion. I think it's compassion about under, looking at things from his point of view right? So maybe he's trying to make you happy by taking you to this like really amazing new, like exciting um, bistro. And your idea is like a quiet dinner. He still tried to do it. He gets points, even if it's not what you want. Same thing with responding to uh, maybe things that you say, right? Men uh, process information differently. They, um, emote differently. So it's your responsibility. I think it is to learn more about how men think and feel so that you can not just better understand them, but better appreciate them. Before we go, I want to give you a chance to just maybe leave us with a parting last piece or thought. Okay. Um, having love in your life, adding this to your life is is a, an experience that I think every woman, especially every human being should have. And while there may be challenges right now, I guarantee you, if you just keep learning, like I say, there's just some things you don't yet know. So just keep doing what you're doing here. Watch you know, this whole series, um, learn more about men, learn more about yourself, and don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. When you open your mind and you open your heart, Things will come to you. Love will come to you. And um, I, think, I think it's in your future. I think you're closer than you think because you're here. Yeah, yeah. 
So thank you. I love that perspective. And that's a great way to wrap up. I want to thank you once again, Bobby, for being here uh, as a returning guest. And I love this topic. I just thought this was fabulous and really valuable. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, bye-bye for now.